So something that the AI struggles with is its continuity. So as a student organization, our average number of time is less than three years, um, meaning that you know institutional knowledge turnover is a very real thing. You know we highlighted at the beginning of the session yesterday that for many of you this is your first in-person forum, and for some of you your first in-person conference in general. So being in community and understanding these things uh, changes very regularly. So this leads to some challenges. How do you plan to address the issue of continuity in the next year? Yeah, so I think that's honestly a really great challenge that we're facing right now. I've been lucky enough to be part of the, the older generation of the AIS and now the newer generation too. And I think that with that, we can really embrace the change and look at this as a new opportunity to really get the, you know, get everyone involved while they're young in the organization, but then, you know, listen to what you all really want to see and things like our conference planning. So I think that forum is a really perfect example that we're seeing that forum is a little bit different than it has been in years past, but we really can use that as an opportunity to let the members shape what forum looks like, you know, maybe potentially collaborating with other organizations like NOMA. Um, yeah, I think that's, Um, you know, from my you know, experience with you know, continuity and turnover, um, uh, our, our board at our chapter at Teacher Mercy turns over almost every year completely. And so what we've learned it's really important to kind of, um, you know, develop initiatives and documents that, you know, teens can read and learn from every year and kind of um, help new boards see the history of the organization. Um, not only as a local chapter, but the national chapter as 
well um, to uh, help the new boards as much as possible. And so I think that's something that can be um, you know, developed further on the national level. Thank you both. In order to enact change, you have to understand how change is made. What specific aspects of the president role would you leverage to advocate for not just architecture students, but design students, and not just in the US, but around the world? Um, no, I think uh, the AIS is doing a really good job with you know, collaboration with chapters, um, and chapter to chapter collaboration. Um, but another thing I think you know can be you know pushed upon is showing students what can be done with a degree in architecture. Um, for example, we had sessions today on policy and change and project management, but I think it can go even further. Um, we've had students from our school go to Disney and design cartoons, and that's something you can do with an architecture degree. And so I think just expanding students' knowledge of architecture and the degree you're getting is really important. Um, yeah, so then just expanding the knowledge of what you can do as, as a designer, as an architect. Um, so we don't have to just design buildings, but you can do a lot more. So sorry, would you be able to repeat the question one more time? is growing. I personally have been really fortunate to learn a lot from our international chapters this year and it's been super encouraging to see you know how active how large our chapters in the Middle East are and seeing what they're up to. I think that one of the things that we can do to start to involve those chapters more is you know continue pushing the the conference planning for our conferences in the Middle East and having an international conference and I think that our organization too is at a pivotal point where we're becoming even more inclusive. So if I were elected, I would really love to get those chapters more involved and really be able to go you know, visit them in person. I think that one of the really great things of national officer position as well is that we've been able to do a lot of chapter visits. So being able to go in person and see them and you know, make them feel like they're involved. Here's a fun one. If asked by a fellow student, why should I join the AIS, how would you respond? I, pretty easy for me, I would say definitely the people. I, when I joined as a freshman, I really didn't know how amazing the community would be. And very lucky to say that many of my very best friends are in the AIS and being in a space like this and just you know coming to conferences, I think Cooper hit the nail on the head the other day that you get here. People are just bracing each other with warm arms and you know, it's just so great to be in a community that people are constantly inspiring each other and you know, you're meeting everyone that's the future of the profession and seeing the things that you're all so passionate about with you know learning a teaching culture and advocacy. You know, it makes me feel really positive that we are pushing the profession and we are going to change it and we're going to make it even better than it is now. I have a very you know, similar answer. I think it's, it is the people at AIS. Um, and when I started college, I did not start at AIS. I, was, uh, in, I ran track and cross country and when that didn't work out, I had to find something. And so we decided to rebuild our AIS chapter and those relationships I developed with rebuilding it from the board, and also coming to conferences you know, from Milwaukee to DC to now. Um, the people who I've met and the people who I see at all those conferences really make AIS special. Thank you both. Um, this is a question that was actually asked to, I believe, Julia and I last year during our, one of our speech practices by a former officer. Um, a big part of the officer role is representing students in spaces with our alliance partners and with other members of the professional architectural community, whether that be in practice or education. Um, often, you know, you're going to find yourself advocating for students, and the question that was posed to us is, what is, if someone from the profession comes to you and asks, what is the future of architecture, what would that be for you? 
Um, I think the future of architecture really is really just like learning to accept change. Um, I think, you know, especially the last few years or so, even from when I've started school to now, the profession of architecture is starting to change. And so I think, you know, these students that come out of school now have you know, very different ideas than I think that have been proposed before. And so, you know, letting employers know and um, having them accept, you know, these come with these new ideas and hear them out. And because um, I think the ideas coming out of school now are really interesting. And, those perspectives uh, should be heard. To me, I think that the future of architecture is even more diverse than it is now. I think that you know it's diverse in a number of different ways. Not only with you know the education that we're getting, you see so many people take many different paths in architecture. You know, your degree trains you to do so many different things, and I think that's a really beautiful thing. I also think that in terms of you know, representation, we're seeing many more women architects, we're seeing many people from many different groups that are now becoming more and more involved and better represented. represented. And this year it's been really just such a pleasure to be a liaison on the JEDI task force and hear everything that people are passionate about, especially with representing undocumented students and advocating for international students. And I think you know, we keep pushing for that, and it's been incredible to just listen to the Jedi and be there as an ally as well. Thank you both. We have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, the next one is the 2024-2027 strategic plan, which is to be completed in spring. The pillars of that plan are cultivate, collaborate, and empower. How do you see yourself embodying those ideals during your time as an officer? Absolutely. So it's been a pleasure to see that strategic plan evolve this year as a board member. And one of the things that I've been really excited about with regards to empower is hearing all how passionate you are all are about advocacy work. I've been hearing a lot from, especially in the Northeast squad about how you really want to be out in the community, working with communities through whether that be FBD or finding more community opportunities with your local school or town. And I think that, you know, with the strategic plan, we can push that even further with our partners and look for partners that are, you know, willing to do that type of work um, and really kind of push that forward. So yeah, it's been, it's been a pleasure to be here. So I've, uh, I'm on the 2023-4 um, bylaws committee, um, and so I've heard these before. This, as soon as I've heard them, I've always thought of collaborate and collaboration as kind of the center with um, helping students or empowering students to collaborate. Um, and I believe you know empowering students to collaborate will then cultivate um, you know shared ideas and shared events and um, or collaborative events. Between chapters, because um, I think collaboration is, you know, AIS's you know, greatest asset. Um, collaborating students around the country to share ideas and um, share how they've been taught and different projects, um, and so I think empowering students to collaborate, you know, will um, cultivate those shared ideas. All right, and I'll close this out with a simple one. What is one thing that you wish you knew? Um, architecture is not, you know, there's a lot more of architecture than just drawing on a piece of paper and a building shows up. Um, I know that when you come out of school, not everybody becomes a, you know, uh, concept designer. You can become a technical designer. You can do specs. You can do project management. And so I think, you know, exposing that to, you know, younger students and high school students that Architecture really isn't just about one thing. There's so many avenues of this degree um, that really need to be more exposed. So when I first decided to pursue architecture, it was in eighth grade. It was because I really loved drawing and math. And as I've gotten further and further throughout my career, I've realized that now the biggest thing for me is the community and the impact that you can have on a community and that architecture can really be about the people and the positive impact that you can have on those that you're designing for. 
and you know you get to really tell a story with architecture that's something i never would have imagined as a little kid thinking that i wanted to be in architecture i didn't realize how many different facets that it can have and just you know the positive impact it can have on people's lives thank you both can we give them both a quick round of applause Vice President has come up, Bella Hartzig, and Howard Lozano. Is this thing on? All right. Can we get one more round of applause for our Vice President of So, the first question I have for you guys is, why did you decide, decide to run for this position? So, I kind of talked about this yesterday. Um, I originally was not a huge fan of the AIS, and I was just kind of like, oh, you know, it's another organization. But after getting into it a little bit more, I realized that it is about the connections and everything as such. So I really wanted as vice president to be the inward facing uh, voice. And I think I would do a very good job of connecting students, connecting chapters. Um, and yeah, so that's why I'm running, because I think it would be good. <laughs> well, personally, I didn't know that I could run for vice president being part of the international regions. So it took getting shoulder tapped and then just reflecting on my experience over the past year, both serving as board of directors and talking to the different chapters. And I realized that this is kind of the spirit of the AIS, empowering people and getting them into positions that they didn't think they were able to get. And so I kind of want to be able to do the same for all of you. And that's the reason we're running. Great, thank you both so much. So, like you mentioned, as vice president uh, and the officer dealing directly with membership and membership issues, how would you use your position to bring the perspectives of students and members into the national office? Well, one thing that I would do is that I would establish a little bit uh, or more clear protocols to get student voices into the decisions and actions that we take as a board of directors. I think that there is much to do about that as well as demystifying the, the work that we do over here and just letting all of you know what we're doing, how we're doing it, and how you can be a part of the process. So kind of similar to that, like I totally agree, but in my bid packet I talked about the utilization of social media. I think the AIS does a great job of spreading news but I don't think that as many students know about the social media aspect as they should. Uh, we're in a generation of you know, media and the internet and everything like that, and I think we should take advantage of that. Great, thank you both so much. And I'll also echo Colt and ask you both, what is the future of architecture? So I also think that the future of architecture is change. Um, Everything's changing so fast, everything's getting modern, but then there's also the change of sustainability within old homes, but then you're keeping the old homes. <laughs> and so it's really hard to navigate that. Um, but I do think that the future of architecture will be more like when we start to get into the power roles, that we're gonna be more accepting of all students and people coming into our architecture firm. And I think it's gonna start bringing in some pretty wild designs and buildings because we have such bright minds, but we don't really get to use them right now because, uh, you know, the older generation. <laughs> well, I think that that's a, a bit of a convoluted question because defining or establishing what the future of architecture could be means having a clear idea of what architecture is. And that is a very broad topic, right? Um, so what I would say is that the future of architecture is you and whatever you decide to do with your talents, 
your knowledge and not just what you decide to do with it, but also how you decide to do it. Great, thank you both. Um, the next question will be working with the vice president and president and staff in the national office every day is an experience that you can't be fully prepared for. But what are some of your strengths that make you great to work with on a team? The first one first. I think that one of the um, things that helped me work in a team is that first of all, I've found that a lot. I've had a couple of conversations with all of you and um, my background includes a lot of teamwork. Um, but also, I also try to put empathy and kindness first. Uh, and I think that that is important at any level when we're dealing with other people, especially in teamwork, and especially in a, an environment such as the national office. I think that that is one of the uh, qualities that I, I have that could be strengths when it comes to that. So I work a lot in teams in school, as I'm sure many of you do. And I think something that I bring to the table that makes me a good teammate is I'm very good at listening and kind of like giving and taking like my idea versus your idea or finding one that meets both aspects. Um, and I think that's something that I'm yeah, good at. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. Um, so in your engagement with Alliance organizations, how do you plan to utilize your voice with the ACSA, uh, in which the vice president is the student director on the board. Uh, so how do you plan to use your voice uh, in discussions with their leadership and with other partners? So first of all, uh, similar to the president's, uh, the first thing is listen, listening to the students and utilizing everything that we hear and see that you guys want and then obviously going to the ACSA conferences and letting them know like, this is not just my idea, it's the student's idea, the organization's idea. I think it's really important for them to hear that there are numbers backing this and it's not just like a four or five, but like, yeah, this is what we want. So. Well, what I would do is um, advocate for student voices in general because um, there's usually this thought or this idea that uh, what we were talking about earlier in the presidential QA, um, that change is something that could be a hindrance to our activities, but I think that it's actually an asset. The fact that we have so many new people coming in every year, everyone with different ideas, everyone with different experiences, I think that that's something very important. And just listening to them and acknowledging it as an asset and communicating that to other organizations. I think that that is the most valuable thing we can do as a student organization. Great, and we will also echo another question from the president's Q&A. If you were asked by another student, why should I join the AIS, what do you say? I would say, first of all, and I think we all agree on this, um, community, the community that we have here is just amazing. Not just because you find other people that you can rely on or people that can help you get out of your comfort zone, but also because it is a way to create a, a space where you can just experience what you want to become in the future, what kind of professional you want to be. And I think that that is one of the biggest assets that the AIS has and one of the reasons that people should join. Uh, yeah, the community, the people, um, as well as the organization as a whole, providing the opportunities like the career fairs and the scholarships and everything like that, that was something that I didn't notice the AIS had until I got a little bit further into it. And I think that's probably the major thing that I would tell someone if they were to ask why to join, it would be all of the opportunities that the organization gives. Great, thank you both. So my next question for you is, what is one of the challenges facing architecture and design students that you are looking forward to addressing? Um, so I talked about this in my bid packet and I talked about it with the Alvin Architecture. So I personally am bisexual 
and it's kind of hard to tell, you know, like what sexuality, what people prefer to be called, like pronouns and everything like that, but I have encountered a lot of issues where I go in for an interview and, you know, they're, I'm wearing like a, like a vest and, you know, <laughs> Doc Martens and it's a little bit like breathtaking to me that people will look me up and down and be like, I'm not sure about this, you know, like you can feel it. And um, I just think that's something that I want to advocate for is just normalizing everyone and advocating for everyone to be equal and I think that one of the issues that we're facing is that we are bombarded with information every day, all day, at all hours. Uh, and not just that, but that the profession is nowadays being exposed to such amount of change and diversity that sometimes we don't know how to handle it. And personally, I don't even know if I am able to handle it, but I think that providing this way of listening and empathy taking into consideration different perspectives is definitely a way to go and a route that should be explored. You know, what should we do about this issue that we're facing, both in information, uh, people, users, all of that. All right, and I think we have time for just one more question. What improvements, or I'll call them opportunities, uh, will be most important to you in your term, should you be elected the next President of the AIS. Well, I think that we're in a very good way with our strategic plan, talking about cultivating, collaborating, and um, empowering. And I think that that is one of the most important things we can do right now, especially with collaboration. I've been talking to a couple of you over the past few days, and I've noticed that. Um, Collaboration is an issue because it is an interest of everyone, but there are many ways to go about it, or at least not many clear ways to go about it. Um, as well as empowering you, all of you to know that um, there are a lot of opportunities for you here and out there, and that they are very well within your reach. So that is what I would say. The question was the opportunities for the AIs of okay, improvement. Um, this is kind of similar to something that I answered earlier, but I think the outreach could be improved. I think more students could be aware of the opportunities that AIS provides. Um, and I think that's a big role from the vice president is to kind of like create these opportunities for students to be aware, um, as well as the social media aspect and the internet and everything like that. Just spreading the word that the students have these opportunities for careers, for uh, scholarships and everything like that. Um, I think that could be improved plenty. <laughs> Great, thank you both so much. I think that's all we have time for. So can we get one more round of applause for the students? Thank you both so much. I would like to welcome to the stage, thank you, Juanita Olivera Sparanda and Lee Anderson. We're switching our heads. All right, okay. righty, so our first question is going to be why did you choose to become involved in the AIS? And what has influenced you to run in this election? I chose to become involved in the AIS my sophomore year, well, at the end of freshman year, one of my like biggest mentors kind of shoulder tapped me and was like, hey, we have a couple of keyboard positions still open. I was like, oh my goodness, that's exactly the kind of thing I was looking to get involved in. I, freshman in 2020, so it was kind of isolating. Um, I just jumped into the position of webmaster, and then the next year after that, I was vice president. Um, and this year, as a senior advisor, I wanted to kind of step up in the task force that I've been on. Um, so I've been chair of that, and being chair of that, I've gotten a lot of opportunities to talk to many different people across um, the world. 
um, and they've kind of motivated me to seek even more leadership positions. I'm someone with a lot of ideas and I really care about making actions happen from those ideas and not just leaving that on the table. So I think that's been a really huge reason why I want to get on the board. I want to get stuff done and I want to share what's happening too. So I think I mentioned it in my opening speech and I was not kidding. Um, the napkin sketch competition was in fact the very first thing I knew about AIS and it took a lot of shoulder tapping from there and the reason why I did it, it was September 2020 and it was very hard to become a member for me. Um, you know, things like membership is something that is very hard, especially during that time. So I knew that this was an opportunity for me to get my foot in the door. And from then, it was a lot of shoulder tapping where I wanted to become secretary. I did not know that I was aiming for vice president when I applied to be secretary. So it kind of started going, and through the experience I've had at this man College of Art and Design and now at Boston Architectural College, is a lot of the community that inspired me to take on these positions and the people that have become my mentors and have become some of my closest friends have definitely um, been a driving force for me to be here today. Thank you both. So what about this organization inspires you? And what about this organization would you like to improve? I'm calling them opportunities again. I think we've talked about this excessively at this point, so sorry if I'm repeating, but like there are so many people that go through this organization, and I think part of part of the opportunity that we have as this organization is to kind of act as um, this this launching point for people. But at the same time, like there's so many things that chapters are individually doing and achieving, um, and I really want to create more of a, a home base for those opportunities to kind of be available to other people. Like, I, I know there have been a number of surveys that people have made to make gathering information about their chapters more easy, and I would love for that to be kind of a more universal resource across different um, quads and, and regions in general. Um, and I think just in general as well, just the, the AIS is so motivated to advocate for its students in a way that very few nonprofits and organizations in general can do. And so I really want to be an advocate for everyone, especially those that are most marginalized in this conversation. So, yes. So I think for me, the answer to that and those two questions are a bit interchangeable. I would say the adaptability to change is something that I find really important. It's a it's an incredible asset that um, AIS has had, but as we're seeing today, we are the first two um, candidates for the secretary and treasurer position, so it's an incredible move that the organization is making. Um, but something that I did notice um, being the chair of the Future Programming Task Force last year was the amount of resources that are actually available and that are there for us to be using and the resources that can be opened up. There's archive folders, there's a lot of history that AIS has gone through and once we embrace that change, I think a lot of it is gonna come from um, and adapt more for the future. Thank you both. So how does your background in or outside the AIS make you a strong candidate for secretary treasurer? Juanita will go first. Forgot about that. <laughs> um, so for those of you do that don't know, I'm originally from Colombia, but I left when I was very young and I was raised partially in Korea and then in Qatar. So if anyone wants to come talk to me about that in more detail, I can go on and on. Um, but I've had a lot of experiences with different cultures, with different people, and that's something that to me is really important, talking to a lot of you, seeing what your experiences are and how we can voice those different experiences, because we all have different ideas. And as an international and as an international student myself, I know and I feel for all of the issues that a lot of you have faced. So things like that is something that part of my background that I would really love to add to this position is the diversity and the difference of different cultures that make me who I am. Yeah. Okay, 
Um, I guess, yeah, I can start as well with my kind of life story a little bit. Um, I was born in Minnesota, but I actually got to move to England when I was really little. And so I was at this international school for a good couple of years. A lot of the friends that I made are still people that I see regularly. And it's, it's very fun to be back at university with some of the people I was in England with. Um, but I think having, um, having that background, also seeing international students, because Northeastern is a very international campus. Um, my, my closest friend and roommate is from Canada, so dealing with like even the down to the rent stuff um, has been you know, very informative in terms of how I would deal with this role. But I think um, being the, the Student Health and Wellbeing Task Force Chair this year has really helped kind of inspire me to run for this role because I've had so many ideas where just late night I've been texting people and like trying to make change and figuring out, you know, what what can I do to make this happen and what can I do to make um, the, the documents that I've been making over the past few years and the past different task forces that we've been on, like how can I help people actually access this? And so this is a really good opportunity to do that. Great. So, what values and passions of our members do you plan to bring to the board of directors? I think our members are passionate about current events and I, I would love to be able to talk about that um, off the record as much as is humanly possible. I think having better surveys and creating um, you know, informal and formal ways for people to complain about what's happening at their school is really important. And as secretary, I think something huge that we have the opportunity to do is create better, um, oops, it's going in and out. Uh, create better ways of documenting and creating paper trails. Um, and also something I've been doing this past year is trying to figure out how we can create better student councils um, and having people advocate for themselves at their school level better. So working with, with the faculty and creating more conversation space instead of creating this offensive defensive situation um, is really going to be helpful. And so I'm also very excited to interact more with the allied organizations so that we can create something together. I think something that I've seen in a lot of what we've experienced here at Forum and a lot of the people that I've talked to is the need for advocacy and representation within the organization. It's something that um, we face and we're still tackling today. Um, so things like advocacy and really giving credit where it's due for people that have done things in the past and really understanding where we can learn from things like these and where we can learn from understanding advocacy and where that comes from. So I think um, that's why this role is so important in terms of secretary and treasurer, both of them being you know, happening at the same time. They go hand in hand and they're able to support one another and really support the board with everything that is coming in and out of the organization. Thank you both. And what is one thing that you hope to accomplish in your year if elected? So I talked a little bit about um, the archives folder, which I know those of you who I've talked to here and there, I've mentioned that um, there is an archives folder and it's an incredible resource. And the only reason I really found out about it was being in the Future Programming Task Force and looking at the history of Forum and what is Forum, what is AIS, how did it start? Um, so things like that is so important with our Google Drive and how um, massive and expansive the history of AIS is. So on that side with the secretary, um, with treasurer, I've had experience in the past being treasurer for the NOMA's um, SCAD chapter and really looking at how the budget works and where it's coming from and really truly advocating for what needs to be organized, what needs to be taken care of and prioritizing things like that I think is something that I would love to include within the role. I think acting as secretary treasurer and being separate from the vice president allows for there to be collaboration between a vice president and secretary treasurer. And so something I would look to achieve in this role is creating kind of a backdrop for what future um, secretary treasurers can look to do in the position. I think something that's personally been difficult in terms of 
transitioning between different leadership roles in my organization, which is my local chapter, is those documents that help you get from one place to the next. And so kind of creating a roadmap for what the future looks like for this position um, is, is really the beginning step, I think, for me um, in terms of establishing what this role actually means and does. Great. Um, how would you, as secretary treasurer, stand up for architecture students who are less engaged, not financially able to attend events, or who are traditionally left out of AIS culture and bring them into the fold? I think the, the idea of listening to lead is definitely something that I live by as well. Uh, I make sure to surround myself with people that make me feel like I'm being my best version of myself. And I think that often ends up being that there is an incredibly diverse voice, a group of voices around me. So I think part of this is trying to remain as connected with everyone as I humanly can. Um, I, I love making friends and just talking to people. So it's, it's those offhanded texts that you didn't really expect to talk with a person. And, um, just making those little connections is, is really key. Um, but another thing is I'm an incredibly great person. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you and I'm not going to um, beat around the bush. Like I'm very direct, especially for being a Minnesotan. I, I don't know where it came from, but uh, I think that directness is, is a real privilege of mine because I am white and I'm, I'm presenting as someone that like, has a lot of privilege in the world and, and I was given an awesome education so I think just I would love to have this position because there is so much I can give and I have so much energy to, to use that. Yeah I think definitely in terms of um, diversity and giving the voice to people um, So what I was saying, um, we all have a lot in common, even though we don't think that we do. We're all in this room because we want to achieve something together. We want to create change and we want to inspire people. So definitely looking at um, where people are coming from and connecting in a more personal way, something that is very important. Um, that's something that I've enjoyed from living abroad is there are, everyone has a story. Everyone has a beginning. And even though you may not relate to it at first, Things like language, things like culture, things like that are what unite a lot of people. And I think that if we can find just some way, shape, or form of including that and really utilizing what makes people people into the organization, I think it's going to be a lot more personal and a lot more effective that way. Thank you both. I think we have time for one or two more questions. So I'll ask you the classic. If asked by a fellow student, why should I join the AIS? How do you respond? So I know we've heard the, the community answer, but I definitely wanted to touch on um, the mentorship idea and the idea that we can all be a mentor or a mentee. At some point within our architecture career, we have been a mentee. And then we grow up and we become a mentor. But we all don't stop being mentees. We all don't stop being mentors. That is something that you carry on throughout your life. That's something that you have the ability to keep learning. Whoever you think may be younger because of freshmen or whatever it may be, they still have the capacity to be able to teach you something. You're always able to listen to other people and take something from them. So I think that's something that I've appreciated a lot within AIS is the opportunity to learn from those that may be younger, may be older, whatever it may be, we all have the opportunity to learn and vice versa and share all of our stories and passions. Yeah, so I, I totally agree with mentorship. It's been a cornerstone of, of how I've gotten to where I've gotten in this organization. But I think for me, um, the biggest thing that is, is a great reason to join and stay here is that you are your best representative. No one knows you like you do, and if you care about something, your voice is going to is going to mean so much more than, than me saying, oh, so-and-so wants us to do this. 
you know what you want to do. And, and if you come to AIS with those ideas, like I've been able to, you're going to be able to get to do more things. And so it, it is what it, it is what you make of it, but that that's a very positive thing in that you get to be the change that you want to see in the world. Uh -huh. All right, and that is time. Thank you both so much for your answers. Hello AIS family, it's Tuli Saad again. So the first question says, why did you choose to become involved in the AIS and what has influenced you to run in this election? Well, I joined the AIS because of the commitment to fostering students in architecture uh, and the resilience uh, I w uh, and the spirit I witnessed during the ongoing crisis in Palestine have motivated me to become uh, the Middle East Regional Director to contribute to uh, more success and growth to our region. The second question says, out of many roles of, di of a director, what do you think is their most important responsibility? Okay, the most crucial responsibility of a director, I think, is fostering collaborations among chapters. By creating a network of support uh, and initiatives, we can elevate uh, the, the IAS community in the Middle East. Uh, third one, what about this region inspires you and what about this region would you like to improve? I think the rich cultural diversity in my region, the Middle East, uh, inspires me a lot. There are so different cultures in different places, aka different chapters. So I aim to improve accessibility to the resources and the opportunities. So to make sure every chapter has their own tools so they can thrive in. Okay, so the next one says, how does your background and or outside of the AIS make you a strong candidate for quad directors? Director. Okay, I think uh, my experience as the president of Najah National University chapter in AIS has coupled my experience in uh, entrepreneurship programs and in uh, virtual exchange and mentoring uh, sessions that I have been involved in in the past years and still in this year, uh, which equips me to address the diverse needs uh, in the chapters of Middle East so we can solve problems together and we can learn new skills together. What values and passions about our region uh, or quad do you plan to bring to the board of directors? I bring a, pa a passion of inclusivity and cultural exchange. I aim to remain our, uh, cha our region a vibrant and a supportive space for all chapters, regardless of their size or their backgrounds. What is one thing you hope to accomplish in your year if elected? Uh, okay, as uh, I am the president of a Najah National University chapter, which has won twice in uh, the um, award uh, best chapter uh, in AIS, I hope in my year, if I am elected as the Middle East Regional Director, to accomplish uh, or to establish a robust support system to all chapters, providing them with the different resources and initiatives for their unique, different, diverse needs, uh, so we can foster in collaborations and growth together. How would you as a director stand up for architecture students who are less engaged, not financially able to attend events, or who are traditionally left out of the AIS culture and bring them into the fold. I will advocate for inclusive initiatives such as virtual events uh, and accessible resources. Additionally, I will work on securing sponsorships to, to, to mitigate uh, financial barriers, ensuring every student can actively participate. What is one unexpected challenge of the many that you anticipate chapters facing in the upcoming year? And how can we mitigate the impact in our region? Well, unexpected challenges may include adapting to, involve, to evolving technology. I plan to facilitate workshops and collaborations, efforts to ensure all chapters are equipped to gather uh, with the necessary, necessary skills and resources they want to have to uh, accomplish their success and their change. Scenario, a chapter leader is having trouble gaining new members and getting in touch with the new members uh, they do have. 
what are your best ideas for increasing engagement? I would rec- rec- recommend personalized uh, reach or outreach, virtual exchange, mentoring sessions uh, or programs to foster co- connections, tailoring initiatives uh, to the interests and the needs of students can enhance uh, engagement and connection between the chapters and between the members with the uh, board of the chapter. What skills do you possess that would make you a great collaborator with the other directors to make connections and accomplish United goals? Okay, uh, my con- my communication and teamwork leadership skills that I gained through my presidency, uh, my entrepreneurship programs and uh, virtual exchange uh, can make me an effective collaborator. I am committed to open dialogue and uh, to consist building to achieve uh, shared and ob- shared objectives and different uh, backgrounds uh, from different chapters as I have met also people from, from all over the world and different experiences I had in uh, entrepreneurship programs and in virtual exchange mentoring sessions. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, first question. Why did you choose to become involved in AIS and what has influenced you to run in this election? So I initially joined AIS to be part of a community uh, or a group of people that are like-minded and of you know similar age uh, that can... Uh, help me create and be part of something that is outside the traditional classroom because I think when we're not bounded by a program or a brief um, we can do a lot more and it helps us explore different things that we maybe uh, never thought we could do or we maybe thought we were bad at and it also helps us learn from each other because we all come from very different backgrounds and have different strengths so I think this is the real opportunity to come together and um, create um what influenced me to run in this election is to expand uh where i get you know inspiration from people people do inspire me on a regular basis and i think being part of this will broaden that scope uh, out of the many roles of, of a director what do you think is their most important responsibility i think uh, the most important responsibility would be trying to identify the different chapters strengths and what they struggle with and not trying to impose like uh, one so- solution fits all uh, because we do all have different strengths and different struggles and they need to be addressed in the in the way that would suit that group of people especially in that period of time because that will change even for the same chapter uh, as the years go on uh, what about this quad slash region inspires you and what about this region would you like to improve uh, what inspires me about this region is how uh, resilient we are. I think all of us in general in the Middle East are very re- resilient and that we can come together in, in times of difficulty and work towards something that is a solution to a bigger problem. And I think we're really good at that. Um, and what about this region would you like to improve? I'd just like to improve um, the disbelief in each other's abilities and the disbelief in our own. Um, Maybe we do need uh, a wider spread of a belief that um, we can come together and create something bigger. I think there's also a little bit of that uh, competitiveness that is very stereotypical in in architecture schools. Um, And we do see that a lot here, at least in the universities that I've been exposed to. So I would like to improve that um, because competitiveness to a certain extent, extent will not get us anywhere. It's when we come together that we can really succeed. Uh, How does your background in or outside of the AIS make you a strong candidate for quad director? Um, I really enjoy working with people. Um, I think uh, it is one of my strong suits and it is where I feel like I flourish the most. Um, I enjoy socializing and talking to people and trying to find ways to integrate um, our backgrounds. I was part of the AIS as the youngest member when I first um, entered and I was able to kind of adapt to that situation where most of them were seniors maybe or older than me and I I knew where, when to like kind of step back a little bit and learn and then as I um, moved up in my role uh, over the years I was able to then take my experience to teach maybe younger uh, members or members that were in my batch and maybe advise from my own experience. And then as well, learn from them, even if they don't have previous experience in areas. 
Um, and I was able to be part of a lot of different events with different people, having alumni, different departments in our university, um, smaller scale events, bigger scale events, and involving um, external stakeholders like uh, restaurants or external speakers that were maybe flying in to come speak and uh, overall a very diverse experience. Uh, what values and passions about our quad slash region do you plan to bring to the board of directors? Uh, I think we have a real passion for going back to our roots, finding out um, about our own ancestors, our history. And I think maybe um, to bring to the board of directors is to help remind the students of that, that we can reflect back on the past and use that to our advantage, whether that be in managing a team or uh, in a design project or how we can bring people from different backgrounds to be part of a design project or event. Um, and I think um, a very important value that I have is is to avoid this competitiveness that we see in the studio um, and to bring value to sharing and helping one another without any um, alternative um, vendetta or whatever it may be. Um, what is one thing you hope to accomplish in your in your year if elected? Uh, I really hope to find a way to involve the Middle Eastern chapters more in the broader benefits of the AIS. I think we are a little bit isolated um, in that we may question uh, what do we benefit from our membership um, and how can we become more involved in you know the bigger events that people who live in the U.S. Uh, have more access to and um and also have uh, the chapters um, like intersect in some ways so they can uh, collaborate on events, whether that be in an online event or in their unis, if, um, if the countries are in close proximity, if they can have some members travel and meet up with uh, another chapter, or if it can be a design competition where they don't have to physically be in the same room and just see what they create, you know, just to experiment with that. Um, and maybe create their own competitions within their university and see what their two universities' uh, students will create. Um, how would you, as a director, stand up for architecture students who are less engaged, not financially able to attend events, or who are traditionally left out of the AIS culture and bring them into the fold? Less engaged. Um, I think trying to find out what it is that will engage them because we all have different interests. Although we are studying the same major, um, there are different things that will interest us um, individually. So maybe trying to have a variety of events and encourage them to take part, you know. Uh, if this is a, a certain topic that maybe my team is not well um, informed about or aren't as interested in, we ask other students to tell us more or they can take charge on that event and we'll follow suit and help uh, plan it on the bureaucratic side with the forms and things. Um, so that's one way it can be done. And if they're not financially able to attend events, trying to have partnerships with companies and our university, um, things like that, finding those little um, tricks that can help us, you know, make it not such a financial burden, because I don't think we should be paying for events uh, to attend them at least. And... Um, Maybe trying to find ways to have area sponsor some things if they are much bigger, where students may need to pay for tickets or things like that. But yeah, I think having more diversity in what we offer will encourage other students who don't feel as involved or don't feel represented as such. Um, with the AIS culture, just about that, explaining what it is. Because uh, one thing in my university, um, a lot of students felt like they didn't really understand what we did or what AIS was about. So a lot of education needs to happen about that and just informing people. Uh, what is one unexpected challenge of the many that you anticipate chapters facing in the upcoming year? And how can we mitigate that impact in our quad uh, region? Um, one challenge that I am currently facing as well with my chapter is um, members asking uh, what do I get from a membership? So that's one thing that needs to be addressed because it does discourage people from uh, getting involved in AIS, AIS and from joining if the university is not reimbursing um, 
the cost of the membership. It is quite expensive uh, for students in my university. Um, so students joining on their own financial risk and their time is a bit tricky. So we need to make the benefits seem more, or they should be um, more beneficial and more uh, enticing for the students. So that may be something that other uh, Middle Eastern chapters uh, may face. A uh, scenario, a chapter leader is having trouble gaining new members and getting in touch with the members they do have. What are your best ideas for increasing engagement? Okay, for gaining new members, again, explaining what you, or maybe showing some visual of what you gain as a, as a team and, and the things you experience, having some fun, you know, like um, we used to have like reels and small TikToks, just of us having fun, planning events, at events, meeting new people, networking, things like that. So all that is very attractive to students. So showing them that as a visual rather than just verbal. And um, getting in touch with the members. Uh, just finding out what do th what they use to get in touch. For example, emails for us, for example, doesn't work. We talk on WhatsApp. Um, uh, I think a lot of the Middle Eastern uh, uh, countries will use WhatsApp as their main mode of uh, communication. Uh, I think just finding out what, what they use, because everyone is on their phones, you know, and there may be uh, a certain mode of communication that is easiest for them because we get very busy. Some people are uh, international students, they need to keep in touch with family. So it does get very busy, and I do understand if, it, if they can't stay in touch with their AIS uh, members. Uh, but yeah, we need to find out what works best for the members and trying to uh, accommodate and compromise with everyone. Uh, what skills do you possess that would make you a great collaborator with the other directors in order to make connections and accomplish united goals? I think I um, am able to compromise and step back when needed to just sit, just listen and learn. And then um, I think I'm very good at analyzing where our goals or um, values may intersect and then to use that to our benefit. Um, because obviously we won't agree on everything and um, we just need to use our differences to make them a strength and come up with something brand new or even stronger than our individual ideals and values uh, alone.